Welcome to Mastering Design Patterns and Solid Principles in C Sharp. So let me first give you a quick introduction on what you will learn in this course and what you need to know before getting started. So the aim of this course is to teach you how to design maintainable and reusable object-oriented software. And this is achieved, first of all, by learning the object-oriented programming principles such as encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism and coupling. You'll also learn the five solid principles, which are the single responsibility principle, the open closed principle, the LISC off substitution principle, the interface segregation principle, and the dependency inversion principle. You'll also learn unified modeling language, which is a way to graphically represent your software systems. So you can model classes and objects and the relationships between those classes and objects in a graphical way and you can do this before you actually code out a solution and you'll also learn the main 23 design patterns from the Gang of Four book. The Gang of Four design patterns consists of 23 design patterns from the original book Design Patterns Elements of Reusable Object Oriented Software written by four guys in the 1990s and these patterns can be grouped into three categories. So there are creational design patterns, which are the different ways to create objects. There are structural design patterns, which are the relationships between those objects. And there are behavioral design patterns, which are the interaction or communication between those objects. So upon completion of this course, you will understand all 23 Gang of Four design patterns and where to and where not to apply them in real applications. And you'll also learn the solid principles and some more advanced object-oriented programming concepts. And these are all of the 23 design patterns from the Gang of Four book that we will be covering in this course. So you can see that there are five creational design patterns, seven structural design patterns, and 11 behavioral design patterns. So what are design patterns and why should you learn them? So design patterns are essential in software development for several reasons. And first of all, they help to promote and provide proven solutions to recurring problems in software design. So instead of reinventing the wheel, developers can leverage these patterns to solve common issues efficiently. For example, to implement an undo feature in an application, developers could reach for the Memento design pattern. Design patterns establish a common language for developers to communicate efficiently and effectively about software designs, and this common vocabulary enhances collaboration and understanding among team members. Design patterns also promote scalable designs by providing flexible and adaptable solutions. They allow systems to evolve over time without extensive rework or architectural overhaul and using design patterns often results in more maintainable code as patterns encapsulate design decisions and promote modular loosely coupled architectures making it easier to understand modify and extend code bases and some design patterns can help to improve performance by optimizing resource usage reducing overhead or facilitating efficient algorithms Design patterns serve as a form of documentation for software designs. So by employing well-known patterns, developers can convey design intent more effectively, making code bases easier to understand for both current and future contributors. Design patterns embody best practices and principles of software design. They encapsulate years of collective knowledge and experience, guiding developers towards uh, solutions that are more robust, reliable and maintainable. And many design patterns are agnostic of programming languages or domains. So they can be used across different programming languages essentially. And they can, they can be applied across different technologies and indus industries, making them valuable tools for developers working in diverse environments. So overall, design patterns facilitate the creation of high-quality, maintainable software systems by providing reusable solutions to common design problems and promoting best practices in software development. And just as a note, don't worry too much if you don't quite understand everything I've said so far. 
and as everything will become much more clear as we implement and discuss each of the design patterns and object-oriented programming principles during the course. For example, many of you right now won't understand the difference between extending a code base versus modifying a code base and all of these things will be revealed during the course. So here are some things that you should understand before starting this course. So this course is for developers that have at least a very basic knowledge of object-oriented programming and want to learn design patterns to become better, more complete developers. So here are some things that you should understand before starting this course. So you should understand what classes are. You should understand how to create objects from classes. Access modifiers such as public, private and protected. Class properties or fields and class methods. So as you can see, you just need to understand the very basics of object-oriented programming to find value in this course. Any other object-oriented programming concepts such as abstract classes, polymorphism, encapsulation will be fully explained in this course. And of course, you will learn the very important object-oriented programming solid principles. So all the examples in this course are in C-sharp, so it will be helpful if you understand uh, understood the basic syntax of C Sharp, as I won't be explaining the basic syntax. However, there are plenty of free and great videos on YouTube to help you get started with C Sharp in very little time. So a little bit about me. I am currently a freelance software developer that builds full stack web applications, Shopify apps, mobile apps, WordPress plugins and themes. And I'm also a technical writer that enjoys writing technical blog posts, books, and making videos and courses. So here are some links where you can find me. So I have a YouTube channel, uh, I have a Twitter account, I sell some products such as posters and PDFs on Gumroad. Uh, I have a free CodeCamp blog where I write posts for free CodeCamp. And I also have a blog on Dev2. There is also a full book version of this course available and it includes everything that is covered in this video course. And having the book can help to make revision of these topics much easier as you can quickly look up certain topics, principles and concepts, skim through and remind yourself of what we covered in this video, helping these topics to stick in your head. And if you're a heavy note taker like me, then it will also save you a lot of time as everything we cover in this video will be written down here for you. So if this book sounds like it would be helpful to you to better learn these concepts, then you can get the book from Amazon in Kindle ebook and physical print format. And there's also a PDF version available from Gumroad. And there should be links to those down in the description below. So for every design pattern or solid principle or object oriented programming principle that we cover in this course, we will go over an example or two. And usually each example will include a bad example, which violates a certain principle. And then we have a good example where we usually refactor the bad example to satisfy the principle that we are covering. And all code examples for this course can be found at this GitHub repo. Okay, so I'm now going to show you how you can set up your computer so that you can follow along with the examples in this course. So this course is all in C-sharp, so we need to set up a sort of C-sharp environment. So for me, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as the text editor, and I've provided a link to a guide here to get you started and set up. So let's have a look at this guide. So if you click this link, it will take you through to this Getting Started with C-sharp in VS Code guide, and it tells you everything that you need to download and then everything that you need to do to create a new C Sharp application or project. So first of all, you need to download Visual Studio Code if you don't already have it. So you can download it here. Um, and then you need to download the C Sharp Dev Kit extension for VS Code. So you can download that by clicking this link and you can install the C Sharp Dev Kit extension. You can also do it from VS Code directly. So if you come into the extensions uh, sort of tab, and then you can search for C Sharp Dev Kit, and then you can install. I've already got it installed, so I don't need to do that. And the next thing you need to do is to download the .NET Software Development Kit, and you can download that from Microsoft. So you can download that here. So that's everything that you should need to get started. 
uh, developing with C Sharp. So once you've done that, you can then create a new C Sharp application. So if we come into Visual Studio Code here, we've just got a blank, uh, you know, no folders open. So what we can do is let's create a new C Sharp project using the extension, the C Sharp Dev Kit extension that we installed earlier. So you can press Shift Command P to open up the command palette, and then we can see we have some options here. So you can type in .NET uh, colon and then New Project, and you can see you can click .NET New Project. And then we want to select console app because we're going to create a very simple console app for all of our examples in this course. And that's just an app where we can basically log things to the console. So select console app. And then you need somewhere to actually store this project. So I'm just going to store it on my desktop for now. So I'm going to open that. And then I need to name the project. I'm just going to call it test because I've already created the actual project that we're going to use. Uh, you can call this something like um, design patterns in C Sharp, uh, tutorials or course or something like that, whatever you want. And then we just click create project and you can see it's created this project in my desktop folder. So if we come to the file explorer now and we go into our program.cs file, we can see that we have console.writeline hello world and we can just run this file or this application and we can see that we get hello world logged to the console. So that is how you set up with Visual Studio Code for .NET and this is how I will be uh, doing all of the examples in this course. But just as a note, feel free to use whatever text editor or setup that you want if you already have something set up for C Sharp.